Welcome back. Well, there may be just 37 days until November 3rd and the election, but the election has already started with early in-person voting already open in nine states and absentee ballots being accepted in 28 states. The race is not just for the president, of course. The Republicans are also battling to hold on to the Senate and win back the House of Representatives. GOP House Leader Kevin McCarthy joins me now with his plans to do just that. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me back, Maria. I want to get to 2020 in a moment, but first, Congressman, give us your reaction to the president's SCOTUS pick. I saw some of your comments on Twitter. I want to hear your reaction straight away. Well, I think it's a fabulous pick. It, it's not just Republicans who know this is a good pick. Look at this, Maria. Even those who are Democrats who may disagree with, with her on her philosophical beliefs uh, personally, Noah Feldman, the key Democrat witness that Nadler brought in for impeachment, has even written in Bloomberg that she is so highly qualified and, deter and deserves to serve on the court. And that's really the only question you have before. Will she uphold the Constitution? Will she understand the Constitution? Republicans and Democrats alike know that is true. And what the Democrats are doing in trying to frame her on her faith, they are just frightened about her brilliant mind. And there's something much different about this as well. Just as Ruth Bader Ginsburg shattered those ceilings and inspired young women, she is doing the yep. same. I watched my own daughter yesterday watching her, not even just as a brilliant mind, but as a mother and, and others, and just thought in her mind she could do anything. That is inspiring mm. as a nation for all of us. Yes, it is. What about the vacancy and what it does in terms of the stakes uh, this election day, Congressman? You want to talk a bit about what you believe is at stake? I mean, what if this election is well, contested, I think this for is example? Than... You'll, need a, you'll need a ninth voice, right? You'll, you'll need, a, you'll need a, a, a ninth voice if this election is contested. You need that, and we've watched that many times before, and I think everybody in this country knows it is a different situation. You have so many states who are now using mail-in ballots who are not prepared for it. We watched the, the horrific job that New York had done, uh, where they're disqualified people. We're now watching that we're seeing ballots that had voted for President Trump thrown aside by a contractor. How many other times will that happen? Um, they're not prepared right. for it, and that could make a real problem. So we need need a court that has filled all nine seats for not just an election, but also anything going forward that they have a separate branch of government that they can make a decision. Well, this is a really important point that you're making in terms of what's going on with the fairness of this election. Seeing ballots that voted for President Trump in the garbage pail uh, really uh, raised the stakes here to what could be possible and what could be done in terms of cheating. So I want to take a break. I want to ask you your plans to ensure that we will get a fair election, Congressman, because this is something that everybody's talking about. I'll also get your take on Michael Bloomberg's $100 million investment to help Biden win Florida. It includes raising money to allow ex-felons there to vote. Stay with us. Kevin McCarthy is here this morning. We'll take a short break and come right back. Welcome back. Florida could be the real clincher this November with 29 electoral votes up for grabs and the candidates currently running neck and neck in the polls. That is why billionaire Michael Bloomberg is willing to do whatever it takes to help Joe Biden win in Florida. That includes his pledging $16 million to pay off court fees for thousands of ex-felons so that they're eligible to vote for Joe Biden. Florida Congressman Matt Gates joined me on Mornings with Maria this week to explain. We have a confession document, the memo that the Bloomberg team used to go and get other people to contribute to this effort literally says, we are doing this to impact whether or not these people voted. It's not for any felon. It's not for any circumstance. They're specifically targeting African-Americans because they believe in Florida, African-Americans will vote 90 to 95 percent for Joe Biden. So this isn't an exercise in democracy. This is cherry picking votes. And I am back with GOP leader Kevin McCarthy and Congressman. What about that? Gates and Florida's attorney general now calling for a criminal investigation into this. Does this constitute election bribery? What is the GOP going to do about this? Well, it, it does look that way. And this isn't the first time Bloomberg has done these activities. Remember what he did in the last congressional races, spending more than 110 
$100 million. Now he's spending $100 million just in Florida, but also trying to buy people's votes. I want to make sure every vote counts. We as a nation have a right to make sure we have a fair and accurate election. But it's really concerning to me these activities. And look in California. Our Secretary of State just made a contract when it came to voting with a company that is working for Joe Biden's campaign. This is atrocious that they are continuing to do this. And that is why the Republicans have put out a commitment to America. You should have a right to know what would we do if we were to win this election. We want to restore our way of life, defeat this virus, and more importantly, at the same time, build a safe and effective vaccine and pr protect pre-existing conditions. But what about our streets that we've watched in these Democrat cities? We want to make sure they're safe and secure. So we don't cut police funding, we actually increase it by $1.75 billion for better training, community policing, and 500,000 new body cameras. But we also have a plan for the economy to have 10 million new jobs. This is a difference to what the Democrats are doing about defunding and dismantling. We warned you about this many times on your own show. They, they are for yes. impeachment. They are continually obsessed by this because their ideas in this majority of the Democrats is obsolete. They do not allow any yeah. new young people and new ideas into their party. But, but, Congressman, you just said impeachment. Nancy Pelosi is talking about it again. The Democrats are threatening to break all constitutional norms and standards. Uh, the president, uh, they, they, they want to impeach the president. They want to pack the court uh, with Democrats, the Supreme Court. Adam Schiff is even calling for mass defections from the Trump administration. So what are you doing to fight this? Because I know that Joe Biden has 600 lawyers. Hillary Clinton already said under no circumstances should Joe Biden concede this election. Do you have that kind of legal strength on your team? Does the president, is the president ready for a fight or does he need a landslide in order to, in, in order to make people understand that he did in fact win fairly? Well, we, we have a team behind us, but what we really need is the American public. First thing you need to do is go to... T TakeTheHouse.com and join with us. We have a legal team there, but we need people to make sure your vote counts. If you get a ballot in the mail, vote it and send it in, but follow it online to make sure your vote counts and it gets there. If for some reason it does not, follow up with the elections office, go to the election on election day as well to make sure your vote counts. Secondly, we need to have, we don't have Michael Bloomberg. So that's what I tell. Join with us. If you go to takethehouse.com, the best thing we could do is retire Nancy Pelosi. And I make this promise to you and to the American public. If Nancy Pelosi moves to impeach yep. this president because he's following the Constitution, I will move to vacate her from the chair of the speakership. Congressman, let, let me ask you, the president, as part of his um, outlook for a second term, said that he's going to be encouraging term limits. Now, in my exclusive interview with the president for my book, which is coming out next month, I said to him, Mr. President, what have you learned in your first term? He said, what I learned is that there's deep corruption in government and there are certain people that are protected. That interview is in this book coming up. Let me ask you about that. Would you encourage term limits because... According to the president, there are people protected, and that's because people are in this government for tens and, and, and 20s years, 47 years, Joe Biden. Yeah, when Joe Biden first came to the Senate, he's been there so long, he served with people who were born in the 1800s. Our very best term limit is let's not let them sit in office 12 years. Let's remove them if they're bad. I'm very supportive of more competitive seats to remove people. But you got Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, and Clyburn all sitting there for more than 30 years. This is a real problem of what we have. And that's why this president, President Trump, not only needs to be reelected, he needs a Congress that will work for this country, not just work against them. They want to pack the courts. They want to make Washington, D.C. a state so, we, so they could try to win the Senate. They are trying to dismantle this nation and destroy it by raising taxes. That's why we need people to join with us today. And I've got to tell you, I'm going to pre-order that book now, The Cost because I know what you've been saying on your show for so many times. You, you were the first that told us about this coup, and now we're learning more every single day. This is an election not about Republican versus Democrat. 
This is about freedom versus socialism. Even President Obama said there yep. is no difference between Joe Biden and Barney and uh, Bernie Sanders. And think of this: for the last 14 yep. days, seven of those 14, Joe Biden has called a lid in the morning. I'm not sure about what's going on with him, but it concerns me because I've watched our current president be able to go to three yep. different states in one day, name a Supreme Court justice, have peace in the Middle mm. East even closer, all within one or two days. And Joe Biden can't even decide whether he can talk to the American people or the press. That is not somebody who mm. could withstand the office of the presidency and make the decisions we need. But we also need I a Congress yep. that could actually work with this president. Thank you very much, Maria. All right. Great. Great to have you this morning, Congressman. Thank you so much, Congressman Kevin McCarthy, joining us. We'll see you soon, sir.